Hello class, this is section 4.4 on Egyptian achievements. There are three main ideas for this section. Uh, number one, Egyptian writing used hieroglyphics. Uh, number two, Egypt's great temples were lavishly decorated. And number three, Egyptian art filled tombs. All right, so the first section here is on Egyptian writing. And so uh, the ancient Egyptians used hieroglyphics, right? So the, the definition of hieroglyphics is it's the ancient uh, Egyptian writing system that used picture symbols. So it was pictographic, meaning they had symbols that represent, represented words and they formed together to, to make sentences. Um, hieroglyphics is one of the world's oldest writing systems. We learned about one of the other oldest writing systems, cuneiform. Uh, which was the Mesopotamians, the Sumerians. So Egyptian writing used papyrus, uh, which is a long lasting paper-like material made from reeds that the ancient Egyptians used to write on. And you can see a picture of what that looked like here on the right. Papyrus, and this is a picture of hieroglyphics on the left. So uh, they used papyrus because it was durable and it was easy to roll up. Uh, hieroglyphics that, with hieroglyphics that used over 600 symbols for sounds or meaning. So not only did the pictures mean specific things, but sometimes they, they represented sounds as well. And hieroglyphics could be written horizontal, vertical, left, or right. Um, the Rosetta Stone is another term in this section. And it's really important because uh, it was discovered in 1799 and it was a huge stone slab slab inscribed with hieroglyphics, Greek, and a later form of Egyptian that allowed historians to understand Egyptian writing. So you can see here on the left, this is what it looks like as a whole. On the right, you can see the different parts of it. On the top here, this these would be hieroglyphics. This would be an early form of Egyptian and this would be Greek. So... The, what, the reason this was important is, you know, we can we can read Greek, right? Because it's just a, it's a language today still, and the early form of Egyptian was recognizable. So, using what these were saying, we, we uh, historians could um, translate the meanings of the hieroglyphics. So that's how we know what hieroglyphics mean today. And um, because papyrus didn't decay, or doesn't decay many texts from the time survive. So some of the things that were discovered were government records, right? So records of what was going on in the government, historical records, like this picture in the top right showing different books. I mean, they didn't look like this because it's papyrus, but um, also they uh, historians and archeologists discovered science texts, as well as medical manuals, which showed you know how the doctors in ancient Egypt treated their patients. The next section is on uh, Egypt's great temples. So their temples were the home of their gods, right? And we learned uh, in an earlier section that they were polytheistic and they believed in many gods and um, religion was hu huge in, in, their, in their lives. So their temples were the homes of their gods. People would visit these temples to worship. Uh, sometimes they would visit to offer gifts to the gods or just to ask the gods for favors, right? Which people still do that with whatever religion they practice today. They'll still pray and, and pray for things, right? Um, the temples were decorated lavishly as the main idea suggested. Um, they were decorated on the outside with things like sphinxes and obelisks. So the sphinx on the, here on the left is a picture of a sphinx, uh, which means it's an imaginary creature with a human head and the body of a lion that was often shown on Egyptian statues. So human head, body of a lion, but I think the Sphinx could actually be, there's a lot of different meanings of Sphinx. That would be the ancient Egyptian meaning, but Sphinxes could have different uh, different head with a different animal's body in, in different variations. And then uh, they were also decorated on the outside with obelisks, which are tall pointed four-sided pillars in ancient Egypt, like this picture on the right. Um, the Washington Monument in Washington, D.C. Is, is an example of a modern obelisk. Um, and then on the inside, they were decorated with huge columns, 
statues and a sanctuary. So here are a couple of examples. This is uh, Abu Simbel. Um, the big pharaoh is, I think it's actually modeled after Ramses the Great. Um, here's another picture of a temple. Um, I believe this is the temple at Karnak. And then I believe this is uh, the temple at Luxor. But you'll notice, right, statues. We've got columns, right? And um, yeah, so the next section is on Egyptian art. So art filled the tombs of pharaohs and nobles. So not everyone had access to art in ancient Egypt, but the, the wealthy did, people like the, the pharaohs and the nobles. So what that meant was only important people would see Egyptian art. Here we have a picture of King Tet's tomb. This might be a replica, but it would look very similar. Uh, so you can see the art in the background. You can see the sarcophagus in the center, um, the gold sarcophagus. And so King Tut, right, just a reminder, King Tut was an Egyptian pharaoh. He died while still a young king. And the discovery of his tomb in 1922 has taught archaeologists much about Egyptian culture. So you often think about King Tut when you, when you hear about ancient Egypt, not because he was a great or particularly great pharaoh, but because of this particular discovery in 1922, where they found his tomb, right, in perfect condition with everything that was put in it, right? So that just gave historians and archaeologists a lot of information about how they lived in this time period. Uh, there's a couple more pictures of King Tut. So I think this is a rendering based on the, the mummy, what they think he looked like. So he was not, I mean, he died young. He died young because he was a sickly, you know, he, he was very sickly and ill and was not well in general. So couple pictures here he right so one reason he would be like this right was because a lot of the time and it these these pharaohs right they were the children of right siblings right because they they would have siblings marry and have kids and when that happens you're more likely to have a lot of health problems which was true of king tut uh let's see um some subjects of paintings, some different subjects that paintings would 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 be would be um, historical events like battle uh, battles you see here. Um, I think this is probably Ramses the Great in the top left. Uh, religious rituals like on the right here, that's um, Anubis doing the performing the uh, um, the rituals on on a dead body. Looks like uh, paintings would show farming like at the bottom left here and hunting like on the bottom right. The art of ancient Egypt had a distinctive style. When drawing people, the tops of their heads were straight, um, but their feet were facing to the side. So you can see that here, how their bodies are kind of all having specific positions, right? You can see like their, right? His legs are facing this way, but his body is pretty straight away. Same thing with this person, this person, that's just the style that they used. And then also powerful people were often drawn bigger. So you can see these people down here were probably powerful people in comparison to the people up here. And lastly, King Tut's tomb, again, which I mentioned earlier, was filled with jewelry, robes, burial mask, and ivory statues. And again, that gave just historians and archaeologists a lot of information about what the ancient Egyptians did for their pharaohs when they buried them. So finally, the big idea here is that the Egyptians made lasting achievements in writing, architecture, and art. All right, thank you.